Praise Yudhe Wafe and praise Yudhe Wafe, Beit Noon Sophie, Yudhe Wafe Royal Family. And welcome to our Power of Ten, where we utilize the 10 step scale for our daily Bible scriptural reading. Praise Yudhe Wafe. Today's reading goes along with the scheduled reading for month three day 13 in our holy hebrew sacred solar year this reading is done in our solar year of 6024 fc i am queen vashti artara yishrael bath yahweh and i will be presenting today's bible study using the 10-step scale now before we begin we do want to begin with prayer, we always want to ask our Father Yudhe Wafe for guidance as we move through our Bible study. Guidance as we move through our day and guidance in all that we do for our Father Yudhe Wafe. And we always want to serve him in every royal and righteous way. So before we begin, we will begin with prayer. Our prayer, O Yudhe Wafe Yahweh, God of our salvation, save us and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen so that we may give thanks unto your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the holy name of Yudhe Wafe Yahweh, and you, Chin Resh, Aleph Lamet, Yisrael, forever. O oh, Yudhe Wave, let them be confounded that persecute us, but let not us be confounded. Let our enemies be dismayed, but let not us be dismayed. Bring upon our enemies the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. O oh, Yudhe Wave, Forgive our fathers for breaking your laws, and please forgive us for breaking your laws. Help us to never bring shame upon thy great name, nor reproach against thy works. For surely we have turned ourselves unto thee, O Yudhe Wafe, trying to be upright. And as we confess our faults, please Grant us protection against all of our faults. Cleanse us of our secret faults and guide us unto the best of morals. For surely our prayers and our sacrifices, our lives and our deaths are all for thee, O Yud Hewav He. And now, royal family, the Lord's Prayer in our native tongue of Hebrew, Matthews chapter six, verses nine through 13. Tefillah, which means prayer. Avenu sabat samayim, yikadars samerika, tavo maku taraka, yase razunka, kavas samayim kame ba'arif, et lekam kukenu, tain lanu hayom, uslak lanu, all cut a new Kimon Shisoki Gamanaknu Lakotiam Lanu Veal Tevienu Ledeni Sayom Kim Kasenu Minhara Kilaka Hamamlaha Veha Givera Veha Teferet Leolame Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yudhe Wafe, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. So let everything that hath breath praise Yudhe Wafe, praise Yudhe Wafe, Beit Noon Sophie, Yudhe Wafe. And now, royal family, we're going to move into the reading for today from the book of Psalms. But before we do that, I would like to read from the introduction to the book. I'm going to read from an authorized version of the King James Version, 
that was made specifically for Hebrew Israelites by the Temple of Love Publishers. I'm going to read from this particular publication of the Bible. It will read differently from yours if you're reading from another publisher, which most likely you will be reading from a different publisher. But however, whatever you gain from the reading of your introduction will still be beneficial and give you some information and knowledge and some background history that you may not have gathered on your own. We strongly suggest that when you read the scripture readings, that you read the introduction as well. It opens up a lot of information that, like we said, you might not have gathered on your own. So I'm going to read from this particular version. Understand that this book of Psalms is a part of the Old Testament which means it is a part of our true history. The so-called black man right here in America. This is our true history in the Old Testament of the Bible. And so when we read, we can now read in the Old Testament, insert ourselves in there because we are the tribe of Judah. There were 12 tribes and there still are 12 tribes. Our father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, lets us know that the two tribes that are here today in North America are Judah and Benjamin. We are here. The other 10 tribes, he let us know, are still in Africa to this day. And so we are the tribe that was carried away captive and brought to a strange land and would serve here for 400 years in the hells of North America. We are that tribe. And if you've been following along, you've been getting a lot of history in these Power of Ten classes. I just want to make sure that we understand that this is our history. And so when we read it, we should understand we're reading about ourselves. All right. And so we're going to read from the introduction to the book of Psalms with that understanding. But here's the introduction. The title Psalms or Psalter is derived from the Greek word used in the Septuagint. Praises or songs of praise is the title of this book in the Hebrew. And there it is. So in the Hebrew, that's our native tongue. This book was songs of praise. All right. Authorship. Approximately two thirds of the 150 Psalms are attributed by title to various authors. The rest are anonymous. Authors noted in the titles are as follows. David with 73 of the Psalms. Asaph, 12. Sons of Korah, 10 Psalms. Solomon, 2. And one each to Moses, Heman, and Ethan. These Psalms were written during a long period of time, extending from the days of Moses, to the post exilic era of the Second Temple. The titles, in addition to ascribing authorship, also may provide information concerning the occasion of the composition of the Psalms and musical instructions for proper use in worship. Collection and Usage David exemplified a genuine interest in establishing worship in Israel. Since he began the liturgical use of some psalms, it is reasonable to associate the early collections with him as king of Israel. And that's First Chronicles 15 through 16. David had a vital interest in the singing of songs in worship. First Chronicles 6. 31. In subsequent periods, Solomon, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah, and Josiah may have contributed to the arranged and extended usage of the Psalms. Ezra, in the post exilic era, may have been one of the final editors of this collection. Content and purpose. The Psalms have been extremely popular ever since they were written, reflecting the experiences common to the human race. 
The Psalms have been read with keen interest by people everywhere in subsequent generations. Various Psalms express the personal feelings, gratitude, attitude, emotions, and interests of the individuals who had a similar lot in life. Since each Psalm is a separate unit and reflects the author's interest at the particular time and place of writing, it is evident that the purpose varies with each chapter. Petition, praise, penitence, thanksgiving, reflection, worship, all of these and more are exemplified in this compilation of Psalms. Outline, being as diverse in composition as a church hymnal, the book of Psalms is very difficult to outline. Since each Psalm is a complete unit by itself, it may be profitable to study the Psalms under a partial classification as given below with suggested examples. All right, so one, prayers for blessing and protection. Some suggested examples are Psalm 86 and Psalm 102. Two, Psalms of penitence. Examples, Psalm 32, 38, and 51. Three, pilgrim psalms. Examples are Psalm 120 through 134. Four, psalms of intercession. Examples, Psalm 21, 67, and 89. Five, historical psalms. Examples are Psalm 78, 105, and 106. Six, messianic psalms. Examples are Psalm 16, 22, and 110. Seven, prayers of the righteous. Examples of these type of psalms are Psalm 17, 28, 40, and 42. Eight, alphabetic psalms. Examples are Psalm 25, 34, and 119. The book of Psalms has 150 chapters, 2,461 verses, and 43,743 words. Now, Royal Family, this concludes the introduction to the book of Psalms. Praise you, Dewafe. Praise you, Dewafe. Bait me, Sophie. You, Dewafe. And now, Royal Family. Psalms chapter 89, and you certainly can follow along with me as I read Psalm chapter 89. Now, in this particular Bible that I'm reading right now out of, the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible, they do have a title for Psalm chapter 89, and it says, God's Agreement with David. And we know God being Yudhe His Agreement with David. I'm going to start at verse 1. I will sing... Of the mercies of the Lord, Yudhe Wafe, forever with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant, verse 4, thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations, Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, Yudhe thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord Yudhe Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened 
unto the Lord yud heh wav -Hey. Verse 7, God yud heh wav -Hey is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O oh, Lord God, Yudhewafe of hosts, who is a strong Lord, Yudhewafe, like thee, like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stilleth them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine. The earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Verse 13. Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand. And high is thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy faith. face. Verse 15, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, Yudhe in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. Verse 17, for thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord Yudhe is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Then thou spakest in vision to the Holy One, and saidest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Verse 20. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established. Mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Verse 23. And I will bear down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. Verse 24. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. Verse 25, I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my father, my God, Yudhe and the rock of my salvation. Verse 27, Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth, my mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. Verse 29. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. Verse 30. If his children forsake my law, and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then 
Will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes? Verse 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Verse 34. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is going out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Selah. Verse 38. But thou hast cast off and abhorred. Thou hast been wroth with thine anointed. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant. Thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. Verse 40. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that pass by the way spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease and cast his throne down to the ground. Verse 45. The days of his youth hast thou shortened. Thou hast covered him with shame. Selah. How long, Yudhe Lord Yudhe will thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? 47. Remember how short mine time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. Verse 49. Lord Yudhebafi, where are thy former loving kindnesses, which thou swearest unto David? In thy truth. Verse 50. Remember, Lord Yudhebafi, the reproach of thy servants, how I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people. Wherewith thine enemies have reproached, O Lord Yudhebafi, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed. Verse 52. Blessed be the Lord Yudhe for evermore. Amen and amen. And this concludes the reading of Psalm chapter 89. And now, Royal Family, as we prepare to move into the 10-step scale, I just want to remind you, if you have not yet gotten your 10-step scale and you would like to have it, you can have it today by visiting us on our website at www.yahweh144,000.com. That's www.yahweh, spelled Y-A-H, W E H one four four zero 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 dot com. Now, when you get on that landing page, scroll on down until where you see the solar calendar. Now, go ahead and click that. You'll have to go ahead and download that. Now, when you download that, you will have the solar calendar, and on every day of our solar calendar, every day of the year, there is a daily scriptural reading for you. Now we have 12 months of 30 days. Now that equals 360. And then we have five more days of sundown to sundown. And that makes 
365 days on our solar calendar. Now, right after you get to that 12th month and those five days, extra days, then the next page is our 10 step scale. So you see, you will have the 10 step scale along with the daily scriptural readings and you'll have our solar calendar. We do go according to solar time. We reckon our day from the scriptures where it does let us know that the sun rules the day. We go from sundown to sundown. So you'll have that information. Now, while you're on our site, go on and browse with confidence. We have books written by the Honorable Yud Hey Wafe, Beit Noon Sophie, Yud Hey Wafe Royal Family. If you are enjoying his messages, if you're enjoying these classes, we are sure, we're sure that you are going to want to have his books in your personal library. You can download them or you can have them mailed a hard copy to wherever it is that you choose. We know you want to have these books. We have books like How to Move from poverty to riches. We have now is the judgment of this world. We have a global call to the remnant. We have you are not a nigger. And we have more books as well, Royal Family. That's just a sampling of just some of the titles. We know that you want to visit us so that you can get your copy. We also have Royal Family. We have products made by family when it comes to your hair and skin care. We have also elderberry syrups. We have naturally made organic soaps. So visit us and browse around. We also have audios there, Royal Family, that you may have not yet heard. These audios we were once placing on our website. And so those are still there for you. Now we do place them on YouTube. So you're getting them on the YouTube now, but there are a lot of them there that you have not heard that we think that you might still want to be able to listen to. Also, Royal Family, we do have another website. We have the University of Yahweh.org. Now, this site was originally designed with parents and teachers who want to teach their children at home. This was originally designed for parents and teachers to teach their children. However, this site is also a wonderful site for the adult learner, especially if this information that you're gaining right now is new to you and you want a structured way to put it all, put it all together. This would be the site for you as well. There are modules there with classes that you can take. This is an online self-paced course so that you can study at your own own pace. You will have to enroll in these classes. So go on and visit us at www.universityofyahweh.org. Also, Royal Family, if you are needing a spiritual home, this information that you're hearing just makes sense to you. You love the messages that our Father has brought to us as well. And you just want to be around those that are like-minded, loving this information. We certainly invite you to join us. You can go to our site again at www.yahweh144000.com and you can actually email us from there. We'll get your messages from there. Let us know you want to be a part of this wonderful movement. Now, if you're already buying products from us, we will already place you on our newsletter uh, email group list and you will get emails monthly. You'll also find out how to join us weekly and even daily if you like, but you have to let us know through that email or just purchase something off the site. Anything that you do purchase does go towards the building of our holy Hebrew nation of Yud Hey Wav Hey Royal Family. Also, you can tithe with us, especially if you're going to join us. You can tithe with us in keeping with Malachi chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. It is our law. This is how we grow together, Royal Family. You can send your 
tithes, your donations, your offerings right here on the site. Now, if you prefer to mail them in, you can do that as well. You can mail it to Yahweh's Royal Priesthood Publishing Company. That's 1746 East Silver Star Road, Suite 144. And that's Ocoee, Florida. Ocoee is spelled O-C-O-E-E, -E, Florida. The zip code is 34766. One. All right, royal family, we're going to return now to our Bible class utilizing this 10 step scale for our daily scripture. Praise Yudhe Wafe. Praise Yudhe Wafe. Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe. All right, royal family, let's start with step number one on this 10 step scale. Step number one says Bible, wisdom. Proverbs 4, 7. Well, let's take a look at Proverbs 4, 7. And the Bible is our first line of defense in this 10-step scale. Let's look at Proverbs 4, 7, and it reads, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Okay, so here we see that Wisdom and understanding, they go together. They go hand in hand. What good is it to get wisdom and not have the understanding? You could still make some very serious mistakes. All right, so this 10-step scale is going to help us to get the understanding. All right, now step A, step in step one, part A says... Locate and select the scripture in the King James Version. All right. So for this particular study, we're going to utilize the King James Version. We're not saying you can't read any other version of the Bible. We're just saying for this particular study, this study was designed to go along with the King James Version of the Bible. All right. So we have located a scripture. We've located the scripture that we're going to study and analyze a little closer today it comes from Psalm 89, 4. And we're going to read that in just a moment. Let's move on to step number two. Now that we've located our scripture, let's find out what we're going to do with this scripture. And step two says decode English translation of words with the concordance okay and so here we see we're going to need the concordance and we're going to decode these words have been coded in the bible there's meaning there that many of us don't understand you'd almost have to be a religious scientist or scholar <clears throat> excuse me of some sort to have this understanding this Bible is written in at least nine different ways, making it really challenging. And so because it's coded, we're going to decode and we're going to use that concordance. Okay, so let's go back to the scripture and let's read it. Psalm 89, 4, and it says, Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations, Selah. All right, so these words have to be decoded to really get a good understanding. For this particular demonstration that we're doing today, we're going to decode the word established. Now, in your studies, you can choose whatever word you would like to decode. But we're going to choose the word established and we're going to demonstrate how to move through the 10-step scale and find out what is meant by the word established in thy seed will I establish forever. All right. And so we go to the concordance. Today we are in the Old Testament and Old Testament words were written in Hebrew. And so therefore you'll have to go to the Hebrew dictionary in the back of the concordance. You'll find an upright number associated with the word of study. Today, the word is established, and we'll go get that word and look it up in the Hebrew Dictionary of the Concordance. Now, had we been in the New Testament, we'd be looking at words that were originally written in Greek. The New Testament was originally written in Greek, and we would have to have gone to 
the Greek dictionary in the back of the concordance to find out what those words mean. And those would be italicized numbers. But today we're in the Old Testament. We're going to be going to the Hebrew dictionary in the back of the concordance. And most of you already know there are two dictionaries back there. There's the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary back there. And right behind that, there's the Greek Dictionary. And so you have to be careful as to which dictionary you're going into. If you're in the Old Testament, you need to go into the Hebrew Dictionary like we'll be doing today. All right. But first, we have to find that upright number for the word established. So we go into the first part of the concordance where all the words of the dictionary can of the Bible can be found. And we're going to be looking up the word establish. Now, the words in the Bible here in the concordance are in alphabetical order. So we'll go to where we can find the E words and we'll find the word establish. Now there'll probably be several entries in your concordance and you'll have to find the entry associated with the word established utilizing the verse that we're using, which is Psalm 89.4. So when you find the word established, scroll down and find Psalm 89.4. Now Psalm will be abbreviated, probably PS or PSS. So find that abbreviation and then find 89.4. And that's our uh, word that we're going to be studying. And the number right there associated will be upright. That's the number we need. Okay. So if you do this correctly, you'll get the number 3559. I'm utilizing the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. That's the number I've been given in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. It's very possible that if you're using a different concordance, there could be a different number. Most times we're all pretty much on the same page with our concordances, but there are some times when other concordances might give a different number. Pursue the number that you get. Just make sure it's for the word establish. Okay. Now, because this is an upright number, we're going to go into the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary with this number 3559. And we're going to record those things that we feel are important to our understanding of the word established for this particular scripture. So we'll always ask for guidance as we move through these study tools so that our Father will guide us to exactly what he wants us to have so that we can get the message for today. All right, the word established is found under 3559 in the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary. This is still step number two. And you'll find the word, the Hebrew word, kun, K-U-W-N or K-O-O-N is how you pronounce it, kun. And I thought that was a little funny because I know that we have been called different proverbs and bywords as the so-called black man here in America. Though we're Hebrew, we've been given all kinds of other names and kun was one. But when you find out what kun means, you'll say, okay. Well, there is a positive side to this word. And kun in the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary means to be erect. So the word established is letting us know here. It means that the seed, thy seed, David's seed is going to be erected. Okay. It says to stand perpendicular. So that's standing straight up, straight up at a 90 degree angle, straight up, perpendicular. Hence, to set up, establish, fix, prepare, apply, appoint. It says render, proper, prosperous, certain, confirm. Okay? And so when something is confirmed, it's establishing the truth and accuracy. And so this seed that's going to be established forever will be based on truth and accuracy. It's going to be confirmed. Also, more definition still, direct. Faithfulness. Fashion. Fasten. Well, who do we want to be fastened to? We want to be fastened to that divine mind of yud heh We want to be fashioned and modeled after his divine mind. It says to be fitted, be fixed, frame, be meet. Okay? And when you're meet for something, you're suitable. 
you're appropriate and fitting for that particular job or task. It says also to ordain, order. You know, when I think of order, I know that that is a methodology and a methodology and a harmonious arrangement. Okay, there's a method behind it. So we're going to be given a method. And here we are given this method. We're being established right now. The seed of David, we're being established. We're given a method so that we can connect to the divine mind. It says perfect. See, we can be perfect because the definition according to scriptures is perfection is the keeping of the laws of Yudhe Wafe. Okay, so that's how we are made perfect by keeping his laws. And so he comes to establish for us the laws, judgments, statutes, commandments that make us perfect. We're commanded to be perfect. Matthew 5 48, be ye therefore perfect. Okay, so he's coming to make us perfect, to get us back to the laws. It says, make preparation. So a part of this preparation is understanding that we do have to keep the laws. This is how we are made perfect. It says, prepare self. We have to prepare ourselves. Once we've been given the knowledge and once we're taught this methodology, we have to go on now and do our own study and prepare ourselves to be established forever in righteousness. It says provide, make provision. So when provisions are made, this means that you're being supplied. Our father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nusufidi Wafe, comes supplying us, making provisions for us, giving us a way to understand the Bible, giving us daily scriptural readings, giving classes, audios, videos that we can listen to on a daily basis. These are the provisions that he's giving for us, the tools that we need in order to decode and get a better understanding of his word, giving us the knowledge of the tools that we need. These are spiritual tools that we need. We need the Bible. We need the concordance and all the other tools that we're going to go through today. This is the provision that he supplies us with. It says to make ready, write, set all right. See, these are the things that are going to cause us to set ourselves right. It says, set forth. Be stable. See, as a people, we had been unstable. Why? Because we were eating from a tree that causes instability. The tree of good and evil. Now, the tree of life will cause us to be stable. And so he comes now showing us the way to the tree of life. It says stand. All right. So we are being supplied with this information. We've been supplied also with our holy Hebrew names. This wisdom, this understanding will cause us to stand. This is the information that I'm getting from step number two, from the number 3559, which is that upright number from the Hebrew dictionary from the concordance. All right. So now we're ready to move on to step number three. Step number three says, gather additional original information. Pursue roots and other Hebrew Greek words numerically denoted as the definition indicates. Okay, so here's where you would pursue any roots and other numbers that were um, noted in step two. Now, sometimes you'll find that you don't have any roots to pursue, no other numbers to pursue. And that is the case in this particular word with established with the number 3559. There were no other roots from the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. 
Now, sometimes you may have a different concordance. It may give you other numbers to pursue. If it does, then you go on and pursue them. Today, I didn't find any in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, and that means we can move into step number four. <clears throat> okay, step number four says consult the lexicon for greater latitude on the original information. The numbers are identical to the concordance numbers. Okay, so the concordance number that we have right now is that number 3559. And so we are going to go into the lexicon now for that number 3559. Now with the lexicons, again, there are two. There's the Hebrew lexicon for your Old Testament words. And then there is the Greek lexicon for the New Testament words. Okay, so be careful because these books can look very similar. All right, so just be careful that you're going to the right lexicon. Today, we're going into the Hebrew lexicon with that same number, 3559. Here's where we go. Again, we pray and we ask our Father for guidance. A lot of times, the lexicon has more information, you know, you, um, and so oftentimes you'll have to read through it all, sift through it, and pull out what it is that you think you need for your understanding. Ask our Father for that guidance so that you can pull out what He wants you to pull out for your studies. All right, so I went to 3559. There's a lot of information there, okay? I did read through it, and I did sift through it, and I did pull out information that I felt was going to be necessary to this study. And so the first words that I pulled out was to exist. And that's pretty important to exist. So it's when our Father Yudhe comes establishing the truth for us and we accept it, we begin to exist. You know, when you exist, you have life. You continue to live. And so what tree would that be again? Of course, that's the tree of life. The tree of life is what causes us to exist when we decide to eat from it totally. It says to be, to be set up, to erect, to set upright as a throne, to confirm. Again, we talked about that word confirm, establishing truth, accuracy. That's confirm again, to establish, to maintain, to direct to one's mind, to turn one's mind. See, our minds have to be turned back to the tree of life. We've been eating from the wrong tree, the tree of good and evil for 6,000 years. And when he comes establishing this throne, your mind will be turned back to the tree of life, to the truth. It says to create to form, to be established, to constitute, to appoint, to direct, to aim, to apply one's mind to do something. See, this is application. We can't just sit here and read it or sit here and listen to it. We have to actually apply our minds to some action. We have to do something with this information. It says to prepare and make ready, to be set up, to rise up. See, the information that he comes giving us, the truth, will cause us to rise if we accept it, if we apply it to our lives. It says to be right fit, to be true, sincere, a spirit in the purpose of virtue, to be firm, intrepid. You know, when you're intrepid, you're fearless, you're dauntless, you're courageous and unafraid. You're confident in the knowledge that you're gaining. You're confident and you're courageous. That's what intrepid is. Use of the mind. Again, this is a mind thing. This is a mental thing. 
This is all about getting your mind back to its true nature, the nature of our Father, yud Wave. He comes establishing the truth in the earth so that you can return to the truth. It says to be sure. See, when you study, you'll be sure because you'll see it for yourself. I know that I'm sharing this with you, but when you do it for yourself, you can be sure. It says certain. To be founded, to be prepared. Studying like this prepares you. What does it prepare you for? Well, the tribe of Judah, we were chosen for a particular purpose. We're chosen to rule righteously. So when we get the truth, if we decide to apply it to our lives, it'll prepare us for that position, for that particular purpose. We all have a purpose. And our father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, came to let us know what our purpose is. It's to serve him. We, we've been serving something, someone other than our father. We've been serving Lucifer agenda, Satan's agenda for 6,000 years. Satan was given that chance to rule after he killed his righteous brother, Abel. Cain killed his righteous brother and was given that 6,000 year sentence to prove that he could do well. But if he couldn't, then our father, Yudhe Wav, is coming back and going to put us back in our rightful positions, righteous rulers. And this all prepares us. This 10-step study, this reading of the scriptures every day, this listening to his tapes and his audios, reading his books, this prepares us for that particular purpose. It says to be established, again confirmed, to prepare oneself. So this is not abracadabra. This is work. This is study. This is application. This is what I'm getting from step number four. We're now ready to move into step number five. Step number five says, define Hebrew and or Greek definitions of the original word or words selected in step one by use of the dictionaries. Okay, so we've chosen the word established and now we can actually define, uh, we've defined the word established with these tools and now we can take one of these words you can take more than one but for this demonstration i'm going to take one of these definitions from the word established to further study okay and get more clarity so we're going to choose from the word established let's take a look at the word prepare prepare comes from the word established we have to prepare ourselves we have to prepare self okay so let's go to the American Heritage Dictionary for the word prepare. Now we'll re- use several dictionaries here. We'll think we're going to use about four. Uh, our father said that one dictionary is just not enough to approach his divine mind. So we'll use several dictionaries so that we can get a good understanding of the word prepare from the word establish. And this is what we have to do. We have to prepare. So what does that mean? American Heritage to make ready beforehand for a specific purpose, as for an event or occasion. Okay, so we have to make ourselves ready beforehand. Before this tree is totally taken down, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we have to prepare ourselves before this is totally done. Okay, so we have to start now getting our minds ready. That is if we want to rule ourselves righteously because you see the tree of good and evil is coming down. And so if you're not preparing yourself to do good, then you are a part of the tree of good and evil and that tree is going to be destroyed. So before the total destruction, we're saying, let's get out. Okay, so we've got to prepare ourselves, make ourselves ready beforehand. Okay, for this particular purpose of righteous rulership. rulership. Okay, it means to fit out and equip. See, we've got to equip our minds with the knowledge from the divine mind of yud Wafe To make things or oneself ready. To study or complete a course of study at a 
preparatory school. All right. And so you see the word study is here. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. We have to study to show ourselves approved. All right. So we want to complete this course, this 10 step course that we're taking. We want to complete this. We want to complete this study so that we can be prepared. Okay. Let's go to the Oxford Dictionary. Find out what it has to say about the word prepare. It says to make something ready to use. Get ready to do or deal with something. All right. Well, we want to be used by our Father in a righteous manner. And we need to get ready to deal with the fact that this tree is going down and a righteous rule is coming. And if we want to be a part of that, then we have to make ourselves ready. All right. Let's go to the Merriam-Webster's. It says... To make ready beforehand again for some purpose, use, or activity. To put in a proper state of mind. You see, we want to be placed in a proper state of mind. We have not been in a proper state. Okay, but we we want our minds to be in that proper state. And we want to demonstrate intellectual power intelligence. We want sound mental condition. This is when you have a proper state of mind. Sanity. Okay. We've been insane eating from the wrong tree, but we want our minds to be placed in that proper state of sanity. It says to work out the details of plan in advance. And this is what our father came to do, establishing and planning in advance. This is why the books are already on the site, www.yahweh144000.com. They're there in advance so that you have a chance to work out the details of what you need to do for your salvation. It says to put into written form. You see, the Bible is in written form. Our father's books are in written form. It says to get ready. Let's go to the random house for the word prepare from establish to put in readiness. This is all about being ready to put together. As a meal. Well, see, this is a spiritual meal that we're eating from. Okay. And it's been put together by our father. And we are those special guests that get to eat this special meal. It says to put things or oneself again in readiness. This is all about getting ready. This is something that we want to do on a daily basis. Getting ourselves ready ready and fit and meet for his specific purpose and use. We're being perfected, keeping the laws, judgments, statutes, commandments, reading of him daily, the word. This gets us ready. This gets us prepared for his use. All right. We're ready to move into step number six. And step number six says, consult several dictionaries, which we've done, and compare. Include Bible dictionary and Bible interpreters dictionary. Okay. So now we're going to move into the Bible dictionary. There are several Bible dictionaries, many publishers that produce Bible dictionaries. I'm going to use the Vines Bible Dictionary of Expository Words. um, And I'm going to go to the number that we started out with, 3559. And I'm going to go to the index to find what it says about this word. Now, a lot of times when you go in the vines, they may not use the same word, but I want the information from the same number. So when I go to 3559, the principal meaning is prepare, establish, preparation, determine, Build up and make sure. So this is 
already been determined, determined how he's going to establish the seed forever has already been determined, but now he has to come and build us up and get us ready. It says, make sure. And our scripture was noted here. Psalm 89 and 4, our chosen scripture was listed here as one of the scriptures. And it refers to the establishing of the theocratic kingdom of Israel. Okay, so this is what he's come to do to establish through this seed, through the seed of David, this theocratic kingdom. And it says in all the passages listed, well, in all the passages that were listed here, along with our scripture, Psalm 894 and elsewhere, the underlying factor that accounts for the emergence of the nation of Israel on earth is the power and authority of Yahweh. Okay, this is going to be a theocratic government. And we know theocracy is a form of government where our father, Yudhe Yahweh, is recognized as the supreme ruler. All right. So this is information that I've gotten from the vines. And we are now ready to move into step number seven. All right, so let's move into step seven. Step seven says, define Hebrew and or Greek definitions of the original word or words selected in step one by use of the synonym finder. Okay, and so now we're going to move into yet another study tool. We're going to move into the synonym finder. You could also bring in your thesauri right here. I'm going to use the J. I. Rodell Synonym Finder, and I'm going to utilize the word prepare. I'm going to look up the word prepare. Now, as I said before, I'm going to use the word prepare, but there are other words that you could have chosen to use for step number seven. I'm going to choose the word prepare from the word establish. And when I get there, there are a lot of synonyms. And I pulled out ones that I thought would be beneficial to this study, though there are others there, left them on the table. Of course, like I said before, I am not in any way limiting your study. You can study for as long as you want and all the words that you want. I'm just demonstrating the process right here. All right, for the word prepare, it says make ready. Ready. Clear the decks. Okay, right there I had to underline clear the decks. Because what did we have on the deck? We had all the teaching of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All Satan's philosophies were on our decks, in our minds. And we've got to clear the deck. We've got to get rid of that. We can't bring any of that with us as we enter into the tree of life. It will not be accepted. You, ha you can't, because that would be the same thing as good and evil, the tree of good and evil. See, the tree of life is totally different. It's only good. So we've got to clear the decks, get rid of all of Satan's philosophies, all of his teachings, and we have to prepare ourselves and make us ready and without any of that that we came with from the tree of good and evil. We've got to drop it. It says prepare for, make reparations, groom, get ready, set up, fix up, arrange, order. Put things in order. Set one's house in order. And, you know, that's also your mental status. Set, setting your house, your mind, your tabernacle in order. It says lay the groundwork. What's the groundwork? That's the foundation knowledge. That's the Bible. Take steps. Well, there it is. Take the necessary steps. Okay, so if the groundwork and the foundation is the Bible, well, then these 10 steps help us to get that understanding that we need. So here it is. Take the necessary steps. Make provisions. And there you're making provisions. You're getting your tools. You're getting them ready so that you can utilize them so that you can do this Bible study on a daily basis and get that message from our Father. It says, get up one's courage. Yeah. You need courage to clear the decks. You need courage to get rid of all of that information that you learned there. Okay. This is something totally different than what you're used to. So 
You have to be courageous and want to do this battle. This battle is within. You want to be ready and courageous so that you can be victorious. It says, gird one's loins. Practice. See? So, this takes practice. Daily practice. Which is why we have daily scriptures. Okay? Get into shape or condition. Study. You see? There we are. We're really not talking about going to the gym and, you know, picking up all that weight and that kind of thing. Though, you know, if that's what you do, that's fine. But we're really talking about study here. Getting that mind in shape. Getting that mind ready. Getting that brain functioning. It says review. Go over. Read over. Reread. See, this sounds like a part of study to me. Okay. Do one's homework. Brief. Familiarize. Well, who do you want to familiarize yourself with? Our Father, you, hey, Wafe. It says train. You see, now I'm talking about the training that, you know, makes you proficient by instruction and practice. I'm talking about the training that, that includes teaching and equipping your mind and furnishing yourself with what you need so that you can rule righteously within yourself. It says supply, provide. This is all from prepare. Manufacture, make, produce, construct, erect, and build. What are we making? What are we constructing? What are we erecting? That tabernacle. You want your tabernacle, your house, to be patterned after the divine tabernacle of Yudhe This is what we're building. It says fashion and mold, form and shape. Right up and develop. See, when you develop, when you're developed, you're brought to a more advanced and effective and usable state. And this is what our Father wants from us. He wants to be able to use us, but He has to show us how to bring ourselves to a more advanced, effective, and usable state state. We want him to utilize us in righteous ways. It also says, think up. Okay. Think up. Maybe not think down, but think up. What's up? Our father's divine mind. Think to do his will. That's what I call thinking up. All right. We're ready to move into that special note that comes right before step Eight, and it reads, always ask yourself the question, is this study beneficial to me? If the answer is yes, continue on. If the answer is anything but yes, discontinue and start on something that will be beneficial. You see, you don't want to waste your time. You want to make sure that you're getting the message, which is why we always start off with prayer. Always ask our Father for guidance as you're studying. We're finding out that, yes, this information is beneficial. He's come establishing and preparing us so that we can take on those righteous rulership positions. We have to first get ourselves ready. He's come preparing us beforehand, before the fall, because if we don't get ourselves ready, we're going to be a part of that fall. And so, yes, this is beneficial. It's letting us know that we all have an opportunity to get out and be established forever just by connecting to his divine mind and following his will and being able to be utilized for his righteous purpose. But He can't use us if we're not going to prepare ourselves to be um, ready to be used by him. He won't be able to use us if we're not going to study. Okay, so this is beneficial. It lets us know and reminds us that we need to get ourselves ready. We need to prepare ourselves. Praise you, Tehwafi. So let's move on to step number eight. It says, return to the original scripture in the Bible and read it with a new 
understanding. All right. Well, let's go back to our original scripture, which is Psalm 89 and 4. And let's read it and gain that understanding now that we've gotten some information here. All right. It says, Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. Now well, here, our father, Yudhe is speaking again of David's seed being established forever and building up his throne. You know, his throne, his seat of supreme sovereign power forever. But let's also read Psalm 89 and 3. And it says, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant. Oh, notice also in this particular verse that Yahweh has sworn to David that a covenant would be made with his chosen. So let's see who the chosen ones are spoken of here, because this is the seed that yud heh Yahweh will establish forever on his throne. And so I don't want to leave any stones unturned. I want us to get an understanding of who the chosen ones are, because these are the ones that are going to be established. This is the seed that will be established forever. So let's take a look at First Chronicle 28 and 4 for some clarity. And it reads, How be it, the Lord God Yudhe of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler. And the house of Judah, the house of my father. And among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. Okay, Yahweh here we see has chosen Judah to be the ruler. Now, the Messiah, Christ, the Messiah, comes through the tribe of Judah. It is his throne that will be established forever. Let's take a look at Hebrews 7.14. And Hebrews 7.14 reads, For it is evident that our Lord, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So here we see the Messiah, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, came to establish the kingdom. And he sprang out of the tribe of Judah. And he is the one that came giving us all the provision for continuing eternal existence in righteousness. The application of our father's teachings prepares us mentally and makes us ready with confidence to rule righteously. It's just important to understand that when you're looking for the Messiah, you know where to look, you know which tribe to look at. And then once you find out that he's of the tribe of Judah, then you can clearly understand that Judah is chosen to be the ruler, which is why the Messiah came to Judah first. We were lost, but he needs us to be established. He needs us to prepare ourselves. So he came beforehand to Judah so that he could get us ready to be a part of this priesthood. Now, Israel also, the other 11 tribes, also are a part of this priesthood. But he had to come to that most lost tribe, and he came right through it. 
to establish the kingdom. Okay, it'll be the kingdom of yud heh the kingdom of Israel, and that's who we are. Okay, so that's the understanding right there. Let's move into step number nine. Step number nine says, search the scriptures, and that's John 539. Look for helpful cross references in several Bibles. Crack the codes with the new found information. All right. So here's where you want your Bible to give you cross references. So take a look and see if your Bible has cross references. A lot of times the cross references come right down the middle margin. Sometimes they come along the side of the page, maybe on the bottom of the pages. Wherever they come, you do want to be able to find those course references in your Bible. And we do know that some publishers publish Bibles without the course references. So for this particular study, you definitely want a Bible that will give you the course references. Okay. Now, we have read already Psalm 89.1, Psm 89.29, um, and Psalm 89.36. These are course references. Again, I'll write, I'll give them to you again. Psalm 89.1. Psalm 8929 and Psalm 8936. This was all a part of our reading today. These are the course references that you can reread and get a better understanding. But for now, let's take a look at the course references from the book of Luke. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33. In all these scriptures, we're going to be reminded of a particular seed, once again, that will be established, will be set up, okay, forever. This is Yahweh's seed and the line he chose to allow his son to come through, the Messiah. Let's read Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33. And it reads, he shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God, Yudhe shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Okay. Again, here we read of the seed of David through which the Messiah comes. He comes to establish and set up the theocratic kingdom of Israel. Remember in Hebrews 7, 14, we just read it. We read that our Lord, the Messiah sprang out of the tribe of Judah. Well, before his coming, let's find out what else happened to Judah that will better give us an understanding of who Judah is today? Let's take a look at Jeremiah thirteen nineteen. Now, this was not a part of the cross reference, but I do want you to understand that the Messiah comes through a particular lineage and seed and it's the tribe of Judah. And just so that we can get some clarity, let's take a look at Jeremiah 13, 19 on Judah. What happened to Judah? The, the line that he's coming through. This is what happened. Let's read. The cities of the south shall be shut up and none shall open them. Judah shall be carried away captive, all of it. It shall wholly, it shall be wholly carried away captive. Okay. So Judah was wholly carried away, all of it. Now the Messiah comes from this tribe. This tribe was carried away. And guess what? We were carried away in ships to a strange land. You know, let's read Deuteronomy 28, 68. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Because here you'll see we were carried away in ships. This is Judah. This is a so-called black man here in America today. Let's read 
Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord Yudhewaf shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Now, this verse clearly describes what happened to Judah, the so-called black man here in America. We were brought here in ships and sold into slavery as bondmen and bondwomen. You know, people bound to slavery without wages. I don't think that there's anyone that will deny that our forefathers were brought here on ship from the motherland. Okay, the the continent of what they call today Africa, okay? Long time ago, we know that the north part was all Israel. The tiny part today is called Israel. But this Egypt that we would be brought again into, a lot of people know and, and recognize that that is very symbolic of America, brought here on ship. And we wouldn't see our homeland again. All right, not as a people all getting back there. You know, that would take, our father did the calculations, 3,500 years with all methods of transportation operating 24-7. That would take 3,500 years for us to get back home. Okay? And so, as a people, we won't see that again. We were brought here. So, this definitely uh, lets us know what Judah went through. This is what the Messiah comes through. He's the seed of this. Okay. So part of the preparation for the one chosen, the Messiah, our father, Yudhe Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe was to establish and set up the theocratic kingdom that was to happen. He had to first go through, his seed had to first go through this. Okay. And now we understand why this kingdom has to be set up. Because it hasn't been set up since, uh, you know, the garden. And so now this the theocratic kingdom needs to be set up. And before he could do that, we had to go through some real challenges that included captivity and included slavery, even death. Now, that's what the book lets us know. The Messiah would come through this line and raise himself up. To train, teach, and raise his children, Israel, back into the proper knowledge from the tree of life. This is Judah, Israel, the 144,000 Yahweh's royal priesthood. Through diligent study of Yudhe word, his truth, teachings, we will appropriately and suitably be prepared and established to carry out the will of our father, Yudhe and forever rule, but rule this time in righteousness. When you rule in righteousness, there's no need for that kingdom to be destroyed. Righteousness exalts a nation. And so that nation that is running righteously will be able to proceed forever. Praise you, Tehwafe. Praise you, Tehwafe. Beit Nun Sofit, you, Tehwafe. This is the understanding that we're gaining from these references. We're ready to move into step number 10. Step number 10 says, Keep an open mind, use any given tool at any given time if necessary, okay? Let Yudhe Wafe guide you. 
Okay, so one thing you do need is an open mind, you know, and you want to be able to preserve and protect and guard at all costs the openness of this mind. Now, we do not want anything to enter in from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We only want the information that our Father is giving us now so that we can enter in and access and reach the messages on a daily basis basis. We never want this path to be cluttered and obstructed. We have to become impermeable to the ways of Satan and his philosophies. And so, yes, we can use any one of these tools that we've demonstrated at any given time, if necessary, always asking our father for guidance. Our father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe comes in the volume of the book, And that's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. That's Psalm 40, verse 7. That's so good to know. It's so good to know that he's there wherever we are. No matter what book you're reading from in this Bible, he's there. There's 66 books in the King James Version. And he is there. No matter what chapter you selected to read for the day, he's in there. No matter what verse you decided to analyze. He's in that verse. Why? Because he is the word. Okay. The word today was be prepared. Okay. This kingdom is going to be established and you want to prepare yourself so that you are part of this powerful, supreme and good, supremely good movement. The tree of life is what you're preparing for. You want to get out of the tree of good and evil. There's not a lot of time left. Nobody knows when that hour is. Nobody nobody knows when that day is. We just know that that day is coming. And so we are being instructed to prepare. Praise you, Tehwafe. Praise you, Tehwafe. Beit Nun Sophie, you, Tehwafe. I certainly hope that this demonstration of the 10-step study method has been beneficial to you. I hope that you have gotten a message for today, and I hope and pray that you continue to prepare yourself for our Father, yud Hey wav Hey. All right, royal family, we're going to close this out with prayer. We can face the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, yud Hey wav Hey in Hebrew. Tefala, Avenu Sabasamayam, Yikadash Samerika, Tavo Makuterka, Yase Razunka, Kavasamayam came by Aritz, Et Lekun Kukenu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Al Kate Enu, Kimo Shisokim, Gamanaknu, La Kotiam La Nu, Veal Tevienu, Ledeni Sayom, Kim Kasenu, Menhara, Kelaka, Hamam Laha, Veha givera, veha teferet, le leme, olamim sila. We thank thee, O Yudhe Wafe, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. So let everything that hath breath praise Yudhe Wafe, praise Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie, Yudhe Wafe. Royal family, have a glorious day. In Yud Hey Wav Hey. I love you, royal family. Shalom Uvraka, which means peace and blessings, royal family. Shalom. Shalom.